Lines and shadows are important because they add depth to your animations and detail. It puts objects in relation to each other, adds perspective. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel and let's dive right in with the first, some might say, cheesy classic. Add CC light sweep to a text layer. I use the effects and presets window to quickly find the effects I need. Adjust the width and the sweep intensity. With the edge thickness and the edge intensity properties, you can add additional detail to your text. Let's use a light yellow instead of white. And move the center from left to right in reading direction using two keyframes. It drags attention and guides the eye along your text. You can also build a custom light sweep. Duplicate the text layer, change the color, brighten it, then add a mask. We use a rectangular mask and adjust the sweep direction. Add a mask feather to soften the edges. Move the light sweep by animating the mask path. Maybe adjust the width and the direction as well. You could add additional effects like a glow effect. Increase the glow radius. Wherever there's light has to be shadow. That's like a rule in physics. So whenever you add light to your scene, there needs to be shade as well. Let's work on this very clean graphic. First, we determine the light position and direction. Let's say it sits here on the top left corner, shines in a diagonal direction towards the bottom right corner. Let's stimulate that by adding a gradient ramp to the background layer. You adjust the start and end point, and let's choose two purples. The darker one towards the bottom right corner, a bright one for the start of RAM. Then the light obviously has an effect on the sun as well. Let's add a gradient RAM. And again, adjust the start and end according to the light direction. It is important to be consistent. Let's choose the two gradient colors, a bright, almost orange sword and a darker color. Let's choose purple for the end of RAM. Then I decided to switch the darker color and chose one with more red in it. Anyway, let's not get distracted and duplicate the text layer. We brighten the start color of the gradient. Let's use a bright yellow and create highlights on the left top part. We use a round mask to draw the light area. Then go into the mask properties and add a mask feather. Position the mask, then duplicate it to add a second highlight on the curve below. Let's add a final detail, a glossy edge. We copy the bottom text layer once more and use a stroke instead of a fill. Width, three pixels. Again, we adjust the colors of the gradient. Let's use white and a bright purple. Then let's move the start and end points until the white part of the stroke is mainly on these two curves here on the left, the purple part towards the right side. And we use a mask again to cut it off towards the bottom. Add a mask feather. Maybe move the bottom right corner further up. We want less gloss down there. Finally, let's simulate environment light. We add a new solid, name it bright light. Color, a bright yellow. We use a round mask again on the top left area of the screen, including the top left part of the icon. Use a mask feather again to smooth the edge. We duplicate the layer, let's name it Dark Light. <laughs> that name doesn't make sense anyway. Go into the solid settings and change the color into a very dark purple. And position the mask somewhere towards the bottom right corner. Compared to the clean graphic from the beginning, it has much more depth. It's much more unique and interesting to look at. Although it is still floating in the air. In the next step, let's change that. Find courses and a lot more motion design resources on my website. Learn how to develop motion design strategies for brands. Create unique, smooth and organic animations. Or learn how to animate with expressions in After Effects. Sign up to my newsletter, get your free expression sheet, your free motion design strategy sheet or download more than 150 After Effects project files. The link is in the description. Now let's put things into perspective Turn the flat background into a room and place the icon on a fake floor. First of all, we duplicate the bottom text layer and really darken the two colors by reducing the brightness for the start of ramp 
and the end of ramp as well. Then let's use the rectangle tool to draw a mask around the bottom edge. That's a tiny bit too high. And add a mask feather. The goal is to darken the bottom edge where it hits the floor. Next, we duplicate the background floor and deactivate the gradient ramp. My solid color is a dark purple. That works. Then we use the ellipse tool and draw a round shape around the bottom corner again. As the light comes from the left, it starts here at the overshoot and then overlaps at the right corner. Add a mask feather again and fine tune the mask. And suddenly the icon isn't floating in space anymore, but stands on the floor. What's missing is a shadow though. We duplicate the dark text layer we just created, name it Shadow. Move it below the other text layers in the layer stacking order and turn it into a 3D layer. Then rotate it around 100 degrees along the x-axis. We need to adjust the mask shape. This is the perspective, indicating a floor. That's too much though. Let's move it back a bit and add a mask feather. All right. That's still way too clear and perfect. And remember, the light comes from the left, so the shadow needs to point to the bottom right corner. First of all, we cut off the left part by adjusting the mask. Then let's reduce the mask feather on the left edge. I use CC Radio Fast Blur to disperse and blur the shadow. Let's add it. Then let's move the center to the left until the shadow points in the right direction. Increase the amount. With the dispersion, it looks much more natural. Adjust the mask here on the left to hide the shadow parts that don't make sense. You could duplicate the shadow layer and slightly increase the amount for one of the layers for even more dispersion. Let's maybe move the left mask edges more to the right. And that's it. Looks almost realistic, right? CC Radial Fast Blur is a great effect to create lights and shadows. Here's another example. We want to lift the text layer up and add some distance to the background. To do that, we add a drop shadow. The light comes from the top left corner again, so the direction is around 135 degrees. I would never use black as shadow color, always mix a bit of the background color into it. That looks more natural. Opacity, 75%, distance 10, softness 20. The first shadow is pretty hard. We use this effect three times. Let's duplicate it, brighten the color, a dark purple now. Opacity, 60%. And we increase the distance and the softness, 20 and 80. We duplicate the effect once more, Brighten the color again slightly, opacity around 50% now. Distance 30, softness around 170. So why three effects? Because it looks much more natural than just using it once. Let's add even more detail to the shadows. We duplicate the text layer and to the bottom text layer, we add radial fast blur. Let's hide the gradient ramp first. We only need the shadow colors search for CC Radial Fast Blur. We move the center above the top left corner of the text, increase the amount, and the shadows are drawn out. Animating the center creates a nice effect. Finally, let's add some more texture to the shadows, meaning noise, around 5% and no color noise. And it looks like a pretty organic and natural shadow. The CC Radial Fast Blur effect generates light rays as well. We quickly add an environment light again, using a bright yellow solid. Add an ellipse mask around the top left part of your text. Use the mask feather to soften the edge. That brings foreground and background together. To create light rays, we use the star tool. Double click on it, then decrease the inner radius and slightly the auto radius as well. We add the CC radial fast blur effect again. Move the center and increase the amount. And this creates pretty nice light rays. 
animate them by moving the center or by rotating the star. Let's move the shape to the upper left corner where the light source is. Fine tune the position. Create more light rays by duplicating the star shape or by increasing the points of the star. On the left side, I've added a video you might like. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye everyone.